What's up guys, my name is Austin Philbeck, and if you have never been on my channel before, you should be a pal, and you should go back and watch some of my older videos. I've been doing this for quite a few years, and I absolutely love making these videos. The entire sole reason that I made a YouTube channel was so that one day, far in the future, I can go back and I can watch the quote-unquote best years of my life and actually have these memories that I've made with so many of my closest friends. But, of course, with today's day and age and social media becoming such a very, very popular source of income, I dream of being able to do this for a living. So, as I've been dreaming of being able to do this for a living, I've been trying to think of ways to take this more seriously and think about my YouTube channel more as a business. If you have been on my channel before, you would know that I have my 2006 Pontiac GTO, and I also had a 2003 Ford Econoline E350 7.3 van. I actually recently ended up selling that van. Well, <laughs> van sold. I had some complications when I was going to start tearing it apart and building it, and I decided that my best course of action was actually to sell it. Maybe further in the future, I would love to get another one and actually build it on this channel, but I just didn't see it being the best thing for my channel at the moment. And going back to my GTO, um, I went through a whole build series of actually buying parts and really investing a lot of money, time, and energy into modifications and videos for this channel. And of course I did it for myself, but I did notice along the way that these videos did not do well. I was taking my main inspiration of Japanese and stance culture and putting it into an American muscle car that came from Australia. It was just a very weird niche car build. As much as I love that car, and I plan on having that car until the day that I die, so help me God. But for YouTube, it just, it was not a good car. And again, like I said, I love that car, but people do not search for that car on YouTube. No matter how much effort I put into the video, nobody's searching for stanced out Pontiac GTOs. It just, it doesn't happen. Thinking of this as a business, I decided that I needed a new fresh build on this channel. I wanted to get something that I wanted, of course. I wasn't gonna sell out and get something that I think would just bring views in. I wanted to get something that I personally wanted. I wanted to get something that was in my budget and something that had a bigger automotive following, culture, and aftermarket community so that way I could actually build this car and potentially bring in viewership and grow this channel even more. While also thinking of this channel as a business, I started to really analyze all of the YouTubers that I watch and the guys that I looked up to and wanted to be like. So I really started to analyze the biggest YouTubers in the automotive vlogging scene. I know that there's bigger guys out there, but these are the two guys that I think are the biggest in the scene right now. And that would be no other than Adam LZ and Garrett Mitchell, AKA Cletus McFarlane. The one thing that I think that these guys share the most is the fact that they are both in competitive motorsport. Yes, both of them have a ton of builds and a ton of content that they can put out. I'm pretty sure Adam released the other day that he had over 30 cars at this point, which is just absolutely insane to me. The one thing that I noticed is that a lot of people view them because of the motorsports that they're in. Adam competing in Formula Drift, and he also does a lot of grassroots events. I know that he used to do Super D, and I know that he does the Clutch Kickers events in Florida. There's also Cletus, or Garrett, he sets world records in Leroy, and they always get so many views on their Drag Week videos. I really started to analyze it, and I was starting to think, like, the viewers watch these videos because it's as if you're watching a local sports team, whether that be college basketball, or the NBA, or the NFL. A sports team that's local to you, you connect with, and these viewers, they watch them on YouTube, so they are connected with them. And then you want to see them compete. You want to see the process of them and how they got there. You want to see if they're gonna do well in the competition and just the journey that they're gonna take during this competition. I find that interesting personally, and I just really started to analyze what brings in the most views. And that was build content, and in my opinion, motorsport. 
So I decided to go out. I was looking for cars that I wanted to build on the channel, something that I personally wanted to build. I wanted something that was in my budget. I didn't want to spend too much on it. I wanted to pay cash for it. I didn't want to have to take out a loan or pay on the car. I wanted to buy it straight out. I also wanted something that had a large community following and had huge aftermarket support. I wanted something that had a large aftermarket community so that I could go ahead and buy parts, put them on the car, make the video, and just keep rolling out content. Also wanted something that I could learn to drive in. I was tired of shows. I had been going to shows with my friends for so long, and as much as I love show car culture, it's fun, it's very creative, you get to see people in their art forms. It's not good for YouTube content because it is not entertaining. I mostly wanted something that I could learn how to drive and that I could compete in because I want to learn how to drive competitively. So, the answer, my S13 Coupe. In so. I got this car at kind of a weird time. I got it at the middle to end of November, right before winter came, but it's just the way that the cards played. So I was able to push out a few videos, and if you want to follow along, you should please consider subscribing because I'll be pushing out these videos very, very soon. And we are going to be tearing this car apart over the winter while there's salt on the road and there's snow, and we are going to be getting this thing ready for the drift season next spring. So if you want to follow along and you want to see that process, I really hope that you do. Please consider subscribing, leave a comment what you think, and please consider liking the video. Thank you guys.